Pleasure to introduce our next keynote speaker. Paul Elwood is the VP of Data Engineering and Analytics at Netflix. He has also previously led Netflix's Product Analytics Group and Marketing Analytics at Rosetta. Please help me welcome Paul Elwood. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Okay, so that was a great introduction. And also, I'd say the previous session is a great introduction. Today, what I'm going to talk a little bit about is how uh, data is helping us to transform what Netflix is as a company. Uh, so, Netflix is the new question mark. Uh, so, who in the room doesn't know what Netflix is? Okay, good. Otherwise, I was going to have to have a conversation with our marketing department. Uh, we're good there. Uh, okay, but I do want to tell you what we aspire to be. Uh, you know, Netflix, we're really hoping to see in the future Netflix to become the world premier global internet TV network. You know, and we want to stay true to our principles, no commercials, uh, subscription service, you know, on demand. Uh, you can watch it on any device that's connected to the internet, easy to cancel, all of that. We want to give the whole world that. Um, and that's a big goal. Uh, you know, we started this service in 2007 with our first streaming, and uh, it, it was underwhelming, to be sure. Uh, and we've made a lot of progress with our biggest step happening here in January, where we actually uh, launched Rest of World. And what that meant was, with the flip of a switch, uh, we became live in nearly the whole planet, uh, China and a couple other small territories excluded. <laughs> Needless to say, that added a lot of complexity to uh, what it means to run Netflix, and we're leveraging data uh, everywhere to help us uh, figure out how to do it better. So, you know, this is a talk about data, but first of all, I do want to just give you uh, a, a, an introduction to the Netflix culture, uh, because it is really foundational to who we are as a company. Um, you know, the, at, at the highest level, it's about freedom and responsibility, and so what does that mean for us? That means we try and hire fully formed adults who are really great about what, uh, great at what they do, and then give them the freedom to execute on their responsibilities. And so what this means is we don't, uh, we don't like process for process sakes. We don't like micromanaging. Uh, we really want to let people uh, use their best judgment to do what they need to get done. Um, in order for this to work, uh, there are a few key principles that we need to make sure are intact. Number one, uh, we, we try and uh, keep an environment of stunning colleagues. So, you know, no mediocre talent. We almost think of ourselves as a sports team rather than a family. And part of that is we don't have uh, brilliant jerks. I'm sure everybody in this room has worked with a brilliant jerk. Hopefully none of you identify as a brilliant jerk, but that's a separate story. Um, but, you know, it's really critical for us to create an environment where people really enjoy showing up to work every day and feel fully empowered to do what they need to do to help us fulfill that vision I just shared. Okay, uh, let's talk about data. Uh, this is probably my densest slide, I promise. Uh, this is actually our data platform. And as you can see, uh, lots of components to it. I'll try and walk you very uh, quickly through the, the major parts of it. And the upper left, you have our data sources. Um, you know, we get most of our data either through our source systems that are logging events, dropping them on Kafka. You know, we get 700 billion events a day uh, on Kafka. Or uh, from Cassandra, we'll, we'll pull that data down through a system called Agus. I don't know how to say it, Agus this. Um, and all of that lands in S3. And our S3 um, instance right now where we keep all of our analytic data is 40 petabytes. So it's pretty large. Um, we use uh, technologies like Spark, uh, Python, and Pig to transform that data into basically a centralized data warehouse that the entire company can use to understand everything that's going on with Netflix. We do have some other data stores like Druid, Redshift, Teradata that we use for various reporting use cases. And then finally, we're, we're building analytic products in MicroStrategy, Tableau, and also custom web apps in D3 that enable us to really access this data. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about how we use all this data. And it's sort of bucketed into three, three sections. The first is programming. You know, it's a really big challenge for us to figure out what we should put on the service. Obviously, we don't have infinite budget, so we need to make the right decisions. And we need to not only now make those decisions for uh, you know, just the US, but really for the entire planet. 
And how do those decisions change, you know, when you're programming for Japan or uh, South Africa versus the US? So the first thing we're trying to do is build a content knowledge base. And you can think of this as a central store for everything that you can know about a piece of content. So, you know, title, talent, uh, reviews, uh, viewing numbers, box office, whatever it is. And, you know, this is something that obviously involves a lot of data sources that we have internally. Who's watching what? Uh, how far did they get into the show? Did they abandon the show? When did they abandon the show? But it also includes a lot of external data that we bring in, integrate, so that we really know as much as we can about every piece of content uh, that we might put on the service. Then we're looking for opportunities. At the end of the day, it's about making decisions about what to put on the service and making decisions about how much to pay for it. And you know, in Hollywood, it's a pretty concentrated, but we're now, as we go global, figuring out how do we buy anime? How do we buy Korean dramas? Uh, how do we buy, buy Bollywood titles? We're figuring this out and uh, trying to find those best opportunities that we believe will give us um, the best ROI. Um, a big part of what we do is try and figure out how a title is going to do on the service before it lands on the service. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of predictive modeling associated with that. Uh, and you know, it's really about figuring out what features coming out of that content knowledge base are most predictive in what, what areas of the world and for what types of content. Then obviously measuring the performance. A big part of what we do is really trying to understand who's watching what, how's it doing, why is it not doing well, should we merge it differently, should we uh, put different images up, should we advertise it differently. Uh, a lot of uh, analysis around you know, how a title's doing. And then finally, at a more macro level, how is our catalog doing? You know, it's one thing to have a great title. It's another thing to have a healthy catalog that really meets the needs of the population that you're trying to serve. And, you know, so looking holistically, should we buy more Bollywood? Should we buy more Korean dramas? Should we invest more in another season of Orange is the New Black? You know, we, we need to make those decisions uh, market by market. Uh, next uh, area of focus is digital supply chain. And so, you know, as we go global, this is a bigger and bigger challenge for us because, you know, we want to localize our content so that non-English speech speakers can enjoy it as much as anybody else. Um, you see Chelsea up there. She actually has really put us to the test on this because uh, when we film an episode of Chelsea, we want the whole world to be able to watch it uh, within 24 hours. And so that means, uh, you know, pre creating subtitles for something that, uh, if any of you know Chelsea, is fairly unscripted. And so we, we have to do that very rapidly in a bunch of languages, and it's really uh, put us to the test in terms of how efficient, efficient we can get. Also, you see the devices there. Um, most of the world relies on mobile devices to consume content much more than we do in the US. And so we need to get much, much better at encoding our content so that it has the smallest data footprint possible so that you can download it over a mobile network or a spotty Wi-Fi. And so you know, a lot of effort goes into that. It's become even more critical as we've gone global. And then fin finally, quality control. You know, ideally, none of you have ever seen um, your, your content flip out. Uh, but you know, there are issues in the encoding process. And so how can we get better at detecting those? And then, you know, I talked about digital supply chain and programming. But now, we're, we're becoming a Netflix studio. And what this means is we're creating our own content. And we're not relying on other studios to do it for us. Uh, so we have some big, high-profile projects already in the works. A movie, War Machine, that uh, Brad Pitt stars in. Angelina Jolie is uh, directing this film, First They Killed My Father. And then at the end of the week, uh, we're actually going to be launching Stranger Things, which is sort of a, a throwback to eight, 80s um, horror, thriller. Just check it out. It's really, really good. Uh, but these are all things that we created ourselves instead of relying on other studios to produce for us. OK. So 2007, we started streaming. Uh, just in January, we're in almost the entire world. And you know, honestly, I have no idea what our story is going to be in five years. So Netflix is the new what? Not quite sure, but I'm excited about how we're leveraging data to really help us get there. That's it for me. Um, obviously, I don't have time for questions. Uh, but my email's up here, my Twitter handle's up here, and you can look me up on LinkedIn. 
uh, feel free to reach out to me. And then also, um, we do have a, a booth in the sponsored area, so come find us, get some Netflix swag. Thanks a lot, everybody.